Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. In this video we are going to discuss eliminating the parameter once again. Um, however, I just wanted to kind of throw in there a little bit more of a trickier question. Um, reason being is in the previous examples uh, it was pretty easy to solve for t um, and to substitute it back into one of the other equations. However, as you can kind of see in this example here where it's asking to eliminate the parameter and then of course identify the graph of it, you're solving for t with sine and cosine. Not saying it's impossible. What I'm saying though is that it could be a little bit tricky. Um, mainly because one, they restrict your interval from zero to two pi, right? And then they also kind of provide you an option. Yeah, you could take the inverse of both of them and see what you come up with, but more than likely, um, it may be a, a little bit of a, a trickier situation there. And so you can actually eliminate the parameter and, and find a graph of this, in my opinion, a little bit of an easier way. And so this question might be asked in a sense where they don't ask you to find a, uh, eliminate the parameter and solve for a specific variable X or Y. This may just be, hey, eliminate the parameter. I don't care how you get there, just eliminate the parameter. And it kind of provides an interesting situation for us. And I want to go to the graph right away to see what we can take a look at. So let's go ahead and graph this parametric function. So this parametric function, let's go to mode. Let's make sure that we are in para parametric for our mode. And then because it's at 0 to 2 pi, I want to make sure that I'm in radian mode right now. So radian mode and parametric mode. If that's the case, we can go ahead and go to our y equals. And we had the x equals 2 cosine of t and y was 2 sine of t. So let's go ahead and look at the window. So it said from 0 to 2 pi. So that's what 6.28 is, right? 2 pi. So from 0 to 2 pi. Um, I'm going to leave my T step as one for right now. We'll see what happens there. And then for X min and X max, you get negative five to five and then negative four to four. You could have done probably negative three to three. It would have been fine. I'm just trying to show enough information on the graph. So take a look at this graph that it presents here. And I obviously knew this was going to happen when I put it in there, but it kind of gives us a good kind of um, what do I do in this situation? So, I mean, what? This is more like a hexagon, you know, than a circle or anything like that. But that doesn't really make sense. I mean, let's be realistic here. Our sine and cosine functions, they should present more of that unit circle kind of-esque. And so what, what this usually means when it's more of a bunch of lines trying to make curves is that more than likely your T-step isn't small enough, right? Because you're only going to go from a, a certain intervals, right? And 0 to 2 pi is only really 0 to 6.28. So if I only go in one in increments of 1, I'm missing a lot of that information that's in there. And so let's go back to our window and let's just take a look at what would happen if I did, I don't know, 0 0.05. And let's see what that graph will look like now. Okay, so still, that's not going to be enough information for us. Oh, I did the T max. That's what happened there. So let's go back here. Let's do 2 pi. That doesn't make any sense. So let's go back to the T step and then make that guy 0 0.05. And there we go. So now we can kind of see more of the curve, more of the circle that we were expecting to see. Um, and this is going to provide an information because what are we looking at? Well, I'm actually just looking at a circle that's got a radius of what? Well, hopefully you can see that the radius is just 2, right? Here's our origin, and then it's crossing the x and y axes at 2 in all four of those areas. And so this is just going to be an equation in which you have an equation of a square, or excuse me, of a circle, with the origin being the center and the radius being 2. And so if you remember correctly, our equation of a square is x, or excuse me, of a circle, keep saying square, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared where h and k 
are the center of the circle. Well, if h and k are just 0, so that means we have x squared plus y squared equals the radius, which we said was 2 squared. So x squared plus y squared equals 4. So now this is a very odd scenario, I think, for a lot of us. As I'm, you're looking at it and you're like, well, wait, you didn't even really eliminate, you didn't solve for t or anything like that. I didn't solve for t. I'm like, yeah, you're not wrong there. I didn't solve for t. But the direction said to eliminate the parameter. Is t gone? The answer to that, of course, is yes. Now I have what the parametric curve represents in terms of x and y because it was a circle and that was the equation it was supposed to look like a circle and so it was right that's what it ended up being there and so it's just kind of a way to like I said, think about it in a different context if you will